The high stakes meeting today between the top diplomats of the U.S. and Russia over the standoff along the eastern Ukrainian border between Ukraine and Russia. Did they lower the temperature? And tonight, our Ian panel is once again back on the front lines for us to see what's changed since he was there in mid-December. This area is eerily quiet at the moment, but every now and again we hear the sound of gunshots. Although there's supposed to be a ceasefire, this fighting has really never stopped. Tonight, on the front lines of eastern Ukraine, tensions remain, as across the continent, an attempt by the US and Russia to try to defuse this growing crisis gets underway. <laughs> The meeting in Geneva between Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken didn't dispel fears of a Russian attack on Ukraine, but Russia appeared to at least take a step back from the brink, at least for now. Blinken offering to send American proposals in writing to Russia's Foreign Minister Lavrov next week and even opening the door to a possible summit with Putin. If it proves useful and productive for the, uh, the two presidents uh, to meet, to, to, call, uh, to talk, uh, to engage to try to carry things forward. Uh, I think we're fully prepared to do that. The Kremlin demanding a guarantee Ukraine won't join NATO as over 100,000 heavily armed Russian troops mass on Ukraine's borders. There are now well over 100,000 troops, Russian troops gathered at the border. The situation since we were here last month has just become more tense. They say they're ready for an invasion, but they also know it will be a bloody conflict. Today, Lavrov repeating denials they'll invade, but Blinken vowing a swift and severe response if they do, repeating President Biden's warning after Biden came under fire this week for saying, quote, a minor incursion by Russia might not warrant the same response. That went down badly with the soldiers here in eastern Ukraine who've been facing Russian-backed rebels for eight years. We're moving through the trenches towards the front lines against Russian-backed separatist forces. The failure to reach a political agreement has only made the tension here and the risk even greater. Even our interview with Lieutenant General Alexander Pavlyuk interrupted by gunfire. Empire. It can't be an empire. Don't know whether you heard that there. We just heard a gunshot. Well, that's the reality of what this ceasefire actually looks like. We're here interviewing the general. They're going to want us to keep our voices down, but we're hearing gunshots over there. We heard them last time we were here. There is no real ceasefire. And those Russian troops over on the border just make the threat here greater and greater. The general commands 50,000 soldiers and wants more American weapons to deter Putin. And he took issue with Biden's comments. President Biden talked about a minor incursion into the country. President Zelensky said there's no such thing as a minor incursion, it's an invasion. What do you say? I don't know what a small invasion could be, he explains. It doesn't matter if 10 die or 10,000, it's all our people. The US again trying to clear up Biden's comments that a small Russian incursion might not warrant a strong response. We've been very clear uh, with Russia that uh, any Russian forces uh, going into Ukraine uh, constitute uh, an invasion that will be um, uh, receiving a very swift, united uh, and severe response. When we were here last month, no one believed Putin might invade. But with more forces at the border and tensions rising, that confidence seems to have gone. Vladimir Putin says he's not going to invade, he's not going to attack. You believe him? I can't uh, believe him. Uh, what he you said. don't Be believe him? Because uh, you can say anything what you want. And Ian Panel joins us now from the front lines in eastern Ukraine. Ian, that was a powerful response to your question. What struck you most about this trip to the front line compared to when you were there, what, about six weeks ago? Yeah, that's right. And I think there are key changes, especially when you talk to the troops on the ground. I think last year, last December, there was an air of uh, uh, confidence or that they were become used to the conflict. It felt like more of the same. This month, this week, it feels very different. In fact, there was one junior officer that we'd met 
uh, last month, and he said that he didn't think an invasion was likely. Today, he thought it was absolutely likely, and he even talked about places on the map that he thought Russian troops would go to. I think it's acquired an air where it feels much more real, much more serious on the ground. Now, of course, they say that they're ready, they'll stand, they'll fight, they'll defend their country. Uh, as I say, our country is behind us. They've got nowhere else to go to. But they also know they face overwhelming force. Uh, so I think for the soldiers on the ground, of course, day-to-day -day looks pretty much the same. But I think in their minds, they are aware of this build-up, of this crisis. They obviously need this dip dis diplomatic effort to try and succeed. Uh, but they also know that if it doesn't, they're the ones on the front line. They're the ones who get the full force of the Russian army coming over that border. If indeed that happens, we must always stress the Kremlin repeatedly denies that's what it intends. The soldiers say they just don't believe Putin. All right. And still, you, you've been there in Ukraine all week. You, you're saying the attitudes have kind of changed a bit since you've been there. The Ukrainians you've spoken to, you say their, their attitudes are changing a bit. Is there even a sense of like impending doom here? Do they go as far as that? No, I don't think so. I mean, they're soldiers, right? They're, they're, they're trained and they've also had to fight. Uh, you know, we call them Russian bat separatists. We talk to the Ukrainian soldiers on the ground. They don't refer to them as that. They talk about them as Russians. Uh, the general who we met today, who commands 50,000 troops, was talking about the battles that he had in 2014 and 2015. He said against Russian regular forces. They talked about people that they captured. Now, we can't verify that, but he isn't the only one to have said that there were actual Russian troops uh, over on uh, in eastern Ukraine, uh, eastern Ukraine on the separatist side, even though, again, it's something that the Kremlin has denied. Interestingly, though, back in Kiev with the politicians, they're kind of saying, crisis, what crisis? We've seen this Russian playbook before. We don't think that they're going to invade. It's hard to know whether that's bluster or not. But I think there was a slight sense that they felt that the United States and NATO and other European countries were playing into Russia's hands uh, by trying to offer concessions for something that they didn't think was actually going to happen. So Ukraine is in a very difficult position. Lots of people want to turn to the West, want to turn to Europe, want to turn to NATO. Vladimir Putin feels that that is some kind of existential threat. And the truth is that the two positions that we've heard, despite the meetings, despite the fact that diplomacy still goes on, the gulf between the two sides is as wide as ever. And I'm not quite sure whatever letters are written and presented by the United States to Russia, I'm not sure that that is going to do the trick and ease this crisis. Phil. Ian Panel from Ukraine tonight. Ian, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.